What is a setback? Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, the best thing that happened to me was that mine was so bad I was forced to change things. Otherwise, that, that was going to be a very horrible life for me. I have a video of me going down your front squat and you can hear this. My back, it just felt like it just went in half. Give me 10 minutes to get out of this chair. And you, know, you know, it took me, I had to do stuff for 30 minutes every morning waking up to try and get to a level I could function. And if I didn't do that, my day was ruined. I would have had to go back to bed by midday. It's time to stretch and stretch. Welcome to You Can Fix You, giving you mobility tips to build movement freedom and train with confidence. Welcome here. We're on episode two. And episode two is called Setbacks Are Normal. What are we talking about today, JP? Today, we're looking at what is a setback. <gasps> uh, my worst setback, your worst setback, and the mindset to adopt when you are injured. Plus, bonus win. Bonus win. Wow. So, uh, we're talking setbacks are normal. What is a setback? Let's define some terms. A setback is when you're ripping stuff up and you're flying and everything's going amazing. You're cruising, you're making all the gains and all of a sudden you need to stop oh, because no. something's sore or you went too hard too soon or something's really, 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 really <laughs> bad and you have to take a break oh. and it sucks. Yes. That is what a setback is. It's a roadblock and how you navigate them will ensure your long-term progress. Mm. Yeah, we looked in the last episode that progress isn't linear and this is exactly why you know you're you're making that steep steep incline and then oh there we go uh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's just that little roller coaster of emotions yeah <laughs> um so if that if that's what setback is that's pretty simple right and um, similar to setback would be like a flare-up mm -hmm. so uh, you've had this quite a lot with your back a lot of people would have this um online it's like oh i was doing really well, doing these exercises, but oh, my, my back pain's just flared yeah, up. Recurring injuries are yeah. the worst. Yeah, and you know, there's a couple of components to that. Yes, you know, it's a real physical thing, but there's also the like emotional connection to the flare up where you've talked about this before where, you know, and I had somebody message me yesterday about it. Um, I posted about, I don't like deadlifts, but I do them because I know they're good for me. And over time I am getting much better at them. Um, this person messaged to say, I'm never doing deadlifts again because it took me 16 weeks to come back from it. And so they've associated any time they do that movement, they're going to be sore, whether they're sore or not. And it's not the movement a lot of times. It's your attitude towards the movement and your yeah. ability to do the movement. So like you're very long limbed. Yeah. You're not built for deadlifts. <laughs> they're quite awkward for you, but it doesn't mean you can't do it. Yeah. You know, you, you, so for some people, even in that case, it might be you need to do rack pulls. Then you need to just reduce the range of motion a little bit. Mm. But it's so important to learn how to hinge properly. And they yeah. actually do it and strengthen your hamstrings and your glutes and all that stuff. So it's never the actual movement. And if you're getting a setback from a specific movement, it's like, what are you missing flexibility wise? Mm. What are you missing stability wise? And is that the only thing you're trying to do? It's a big thing I've been talking about the group recently is like what are you defining as being strong means it's like mm. you can't attach yourself to a weight on a bar yeah. you can't say oh when i was um, deadlifting 100 kilos that meant i was strong yeah. i was strong back then and i felt fine and now i have all these problems and i can't get back to my weight number and it's like no back then you still had about 15 problems yeah <laughs> and you just associated that you felt strong when you did a deadlift so that's what you feel mm. is strong but it's like there's so many people that can't do basic exercises like can't hold themselves up like in a side plank or you know balance on one leg and stuff re really really big basic things that are mm. really important to develop they can't do those but they're so attached to what they used to be able to do yeah that they think that's what being strong is and it's not not in a mobility sense not in a in how your body should feel sense you need to have multiple things that make your body up and feel yeah. strong and the other part of that as well like if you associate oh i used to be able to do such and such or the last time i did such and such something happened when you go to approach it again you kind of like, yeah. you start to stiffen up, things mm -hmm. get a bit rigid. It's very hard to actually give yourself the opportunity to succeed. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the biggest of, thing with weightlifters, yeah. whatever, if they've missed a weight a couple of yeah, times, yeah. You'd, you'd swear they never lifted before in their life to start making the silliest mistakes that they yeah. never make. And it's like, what's wrong? It's like, you're scared of the weight, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, oh. it's effectively choking. Yeah. It's, it's what you do, you know, um, as a bit sports person, a golf, golf player would, you know, 
set up for the championship point and they've, they've put so much pressure on themselves that they can't possibly perform. So it's helped, you know, we'll talk about this when we get to mindset, but it's kind of managing those expectations mm. and allowing yourself the opportunity to succeed. Um, but if we're looking at setbacks, w- do you remember what your worst one was or like? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh, For oh, me, it was all the back, back times that happened to me. So um, I have an L4, L5 disc protrusion and an L5 S1 disc extrusion uh-huh. with uh, nerve impingement and flattening of the disc and like all kinds of things. My MRI is so cool, cool and incredible looking, <laughs> um, but I've absolutely no pain whatsoever. But um, when I first did it, I had a lot of pain, a lot, a lot of pain. And it took me a long time to feel in any way better. So this was like on my journey of learning and um, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff that we do, I got to a point where, cause it took me a year to get my MRI about six months in. It was like, I feel pretty good again. I started mm. getting back training. I was like, oh, I'm getting back to my deadlift. <laughs> 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 Anything we ever make fun of, by the way, on the podcast, we have done ourselves. And oh we're, yeah. We're making fun of past us. Um, <laughs> Those <are> idiots. <laughs> <laughs> How stupid were you? Uh, um, baby Tom, baby JP. So, yeah, it was like, it was at six months in. It was like, right, okay. I've no pain anymore. I'm back in training again. And my belief back then was like, oh, now my back hurt again. Ah, and the disc slipped out again. Because I believed back then the disc oh, yeah, could yeah. slip in and out. That's what I thought, you know, and I just didn't know any different. It's didn't have any a, reason. Why Why did they call it a slip disc? Or? Oh, it's, it's, it's just a weird one. They're glued on pretty tight, trust me. Um, but yeah, it's mm. so six months in, that was my like setback. I was like, this is not like, I just wanted to throw the toys out of pram and just sure. give up completely. Um, and then a few months after that, it happened again. And then it happened again. So it was like, I had multiple like really yeah. bad setbacks on my recovery to being like, hey, Hey, my right hip doesn't move the way it's supposed to. And, you know, starting to learn all the things that we teach now. Which is, and for most people would be so much of a setback that they'd never come back. Yeah, they'd never, they'd stop. They'd go on pain management and painkillers for the rest of their life. Totally understandable. When yeah. you're in that much pain and you've tried things, it's easy to say, I've tried everything. I'll, I'll. That was me. I was forgiving up coaching completely. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't going to go back. I was um, like how could I stand and teach someone how to lift when I couldn't even stand up straight? And I was like having to lean on my right leg, couldn't put weight in my left leg. And yeah. like, who's going to listen to me to teach them how to lift? I can teach you how to be strong. Just listen give me, to the, give me 10 the... minutes to get out of this chair. And you know, <laughs> you know it took me, I had to do stuff for 30 minutes every morning, waking up to try and get to a level I could function. And if mm. I didn't do that, my day was ruined. I would have had to go back to bed by midday because I was in so much pain. And yeah, that was like, it was so bad and so mentally, like, if you think I'm a bit weird, that's why it's, it's so character building to push through the pain and keep on going. But if you don't build the strength, you, you're just given the reasons for pain to stay, you know, Mm. you're not going to teach your body to adapt if you don't keep going. So that was my worst one was my back injury. Yeah. Back's pretty common. You do have quite a long, you have a long back, short legs. Yeah. Yeah. So in rowing, we call that a weasel back. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> a what? Because yeah, when you're watching a crew from the side, uh, you know, the guys all look pretty similar in height. Uh, and then this guy stands up and he's like, <laughs> massive. And then the guy next to him is like really short. And you're like, but you, you look the same sitting down. <laughs> it's just only short legs. <laughs> anyway. They get the job um, done, right? <laughs> yeah, they, do, they 100% do, yeah. Got a good acceleration at the back end. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, I've had a few sort of sporting setbacks, none quite as dramatic as yours. Um, the first one I had was my back as well. When I was taught how to row, you're taught to sit up as tall as possible. I took that as hyperextend. I didn't know I was hyperextending, but then just with repetition, repetition, I mean, you're doing, you know, hundreds if not thousands of reps every session. Um, and just that repeated pattern over and over. And my back was just getting battered. Um, and because I was quite young and going out to one side all the time, what happened is that it combined with that, um, you got overdevelopment of muscles on one side. And then even when I was 20, one of my shoulders was like an inch longer than the other one because it had just developed more. Mm. Um, and it took a number of years to kind of like let my body refine itself. Um, but anyway, what happened was, after every session, I would have to lie down flat on my tummy because I was in so much sharp pain um, doing the thing that I love to do. And that was really frustrating. What did you learn from that? <laughs> what, what, what was the things you picked up most that you needed to add? So I didn't learn it until like 10 years later, <laughs> which is frustrating um, because nobody around me knew and I didn't know. I was so young. And these are just excuses I've given myself. Mm-hmm. I was so young, I didn't know how to fix it. There's no one around me to tell me how to fix it. I could have, and I should have, but I was so like focused on 
push through the pain. Just I know I can lie down after this and I'll be all right after that. You can, yeah, you can will yourself through you, this. You find your crutch. You know, yeah, no, <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing worth having doesn't take effort and all that kind of stuff. Um, all those, all those inspirational quotes just got twisted. Uh, down the line, what I discovered is actually uh, because rowing such a repetitive movement, you're overdeveloping some muscles, underdeveloping others. You're not letting the joints rotate and move the way they should. It's very like linear <laughs> front and back. Um, so yeah, I had that sharp pain in my back. It then resulted in, uh, I needed to get my shoulder injected, uh, with a cortisol injection. Didn't fix anything, just covered it up. And then, uh, when I took up CrossFit, I've been plagued with back like pops and sharp plunks. Uh, I have a video of me going down a front squat and you can hear this and my back, it just felt like it just went in half. Um, and yeah, the rest of the day I was coaching line against the wall, but thankfully at that stage, I'd started to integrate more joint movement and it's come around a lot quicker. <sighs> I'm not very concise, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> eventually you get there. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. It's, it's, um, you have to learn from it. You have to figure out what you missed from a setback. It's like, okay, I still am missing something. You're always missing something. Yes. And it could, it actually could be something actually ridiculously simple. Like you just need to practice single leg deadlifts. You just need to add yeah. in something that yeah. opens your work. hips up more. Yeah. That, that was something, there was no balance work when I was training and rowing. There was very little. Um, yeah. Like how lean were you? So, oh yeah. So I was 5% body fat. 5% body fat. Uh, I Gorgeous. have some pretty skeletal photos. I was in a weight <laughs> class as well. So I'm about 95 kilos now. I raced at 70. Whoa. <laughs> I'm Whoa. not sure if you've ever lifted 25 kilos before, but that's the difference in weight. I'm the same height. Uh, but yeah, combined with that, you know, the brittleness that comes with being that lean. Um, crazy. But also just like you're looking like you, well, you were, you're so athletic, but ow, I'm in pain. It's just <laughs> the correlation is like, you need to do mobility stuff. It's just yeah. you can't stress it enough. You know, you can be super fit, but it's still not enough. You got to have that added thing in and you need to figure out what you've missed. Yeah. So part of that comes from, I sort of touched on it. My mindset towards addressing the setbacks wasn't great. <laughs> I was just muscling my way through and that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. I think the best thing that happened to me was that mine was so bad I was forced to. Yes. And that's where a lot of people get stuck is it's mm. not bad enough to make them have to change. Yeah. I had to, I couldn't walk, I couldn't sit up, I couldn't lie down, I couldn't do anything that didn't result in me being in pain. Mm. I had to change things, otherwise that, that was going to be a very horrible life for me. 100%. Um, and mindset wise, like we were expecting Roxy at that time. And oh. for me, that was that thought of like, I'm not going to be able to hold a baby. What on earth? You know, and that was my motivation back then um, to keep on going. You know, that was my big goal. It was like, I want to be able to play with my kids. I want to yeah. move like anyone else. I, I'm not stopping. There's no way you can make me stop right now. And that was the only thing that kept me going. If I didn't have that coming along, I don't think I could have pushed through the pain in the same way That's because crazy. it was so hard to do. You know, yeah. it feels your body screaming at you. Stop. It makes the pain even higher, like when you're in a serious, you know, heightened sensitivity with pain, anything you try and do makes it worse temporarily. Mm. It takes you almost 30 minutes, especially at the start to get to a point where it starts to ease. Yeah. Um, that's where do you muster that strength from? If you're already feeling weak and from and, and sore, how do you find the strength to make yourself do something for 30 minutes before you start making any kind of progress? And then for me, I reset every morning. Like I woke up just as bad as I was the morning before, even though throughout the day I was starting to be like, oh, I'm feeling okay. As long as I didn't sit down, mm. I was able to keep going throughout the day. Um, yeah. So mentally you've got to keep on building that strength because if you start to allow weakness to compound on top yeah. of like an existing injury or an old injury, yeah. not a good path. Yeah. That, so I didn't realize that um, you're expecting rocks at that stage. So did you know Jenny at that stage or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she's gotten to see you from that point of pain right through. Mm -hmm. I really only got to interact with you since you've been awesome. <laughs> no offense, past Tom. I was uh, always awesome. There's just different levels to yeah, being yeah, awesome. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> uh, but seeing you now, like, do workouts with Roxy and move around, and and you know, you can clearly see the goal of trying to be the inspirational dad, uh, where you guys are having so much fun together. You see them on little videos. And to think back and go, wow, he might have missed this opportunity. Yeah, I could have been sitting in a betting shop taking bets all day, yeah. not 
coaching anyone, working, making videos, not doing any of this stuff That's at nice. all because of pain. Like it's scary. It can really like one setback if it's bad enough can change yeah. the tra- trajectory of your life completely. And it's, you know? it's tricky because you couldn't have said to past Tom, hey Tom, look forward to five years or you know whatever it was and imagine yourself in a better place because you're in too much pain at the time. Mm-hmm. So it was very much trying to take like one baby step at a time. It's like, what's the next smallest thing I can do to get this better. It's fighting the thoughts because you, your brain goes like, this is never going to go away. I'm never going to get better. Mm. My back's broken. I have a weak spine. This isn't going to change. You know, I'm, I'm just, who wants to be married to someone like this? And you, you start getting all these thoughts, these horrible, horrible thoughts. And your brain just justifies them because it doesn't want you to move. It wants to you just sit still because it thinks something needs to heal or whatever. But um, in my case, my disc injuries didn't heal. Whenever I got my MRI, still showed the structural injuries, but I had no pain at the time of getting my MRI. So your body can learn mm. how to adapt if you make everything around the area as strong as you possibly can. Like, remember, yeah. you're not just, you know, you're not just a broken piece of cartilage or something like that. Yeah, there. Yeah. There's so much stuff around things that you can strengthen. You know, you can teach your body how to work around things. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, even if you like think about amputees and things like that, there, someone that has lost a limb, your body will rejig and learn how to do things. So all I have now is like a wee small bum. <laughs> <laughs> my left bum is a lot so smaller cute. than my right bum Um, and like when I deadlift say for example like I feel my left hamstring more than my right one Um, and I just I don't feel my left glute it just doesn't feel like it's really doing anything so that just requires me to stretch my right hip more and activate my left glute more as much as I can Mm. um, to try and level that out but it never gives me any problems like that's not a big task to do it's just a wee bit in a warm-up do a few extra reps Um, and I know like the, it's the confidence that I have. Like I know if I do that, I'll feel fine. Whereas what I know is if I take a bunch of months off training, I know that things start to feel funny again mm. and like the weakness gets worse and like I feel like my hips are twisting and stuff. Yep. So it's just, it's building up your training to make yourself feel safe, mm. but also strong, not protective. You don't want to be like, oh, I need to make sure I look after this forever. It's like, no, no, no. I need to get so stupidly strong yeah. that I can't have pain. For me, it was different in the sense that I don't like the term but it was like a toxic environment where the encouragement was to just push through and you know ignore it rather than what I ended up doing I took a big step away from a mixture of reasons uh, not least of which was I was just always sore and always getting beaten up Um, and the running joke when I had my gym was that oh JP can't do that he's going to get injured Um, so it was quite brittle but it took removing myself from the performance point of view to go, well, now I can start focusing on me rather than on like the outcome and getting back there too soon. And um, so be a little bit more patient. And I think having that mindset of, like we talked in the last episode, you're not trying to rush. You're trying to build habits that will last. Mm-hmm. And and because if you think about a habit, I was like, if I did that habit every day for the next five years, it would be, ludicrous to think that things wouldn't be different and um, I think that's such a powerful thought if you can really latch onto that it's like if I brush my teeth every day for the next five years surely my teeth would be better <laughs> well yeah and <laughs> um, so the same applies for looking after your body doing some rotations and um, doing five minutes of mobility in the morning all that kind of stuff so you had shared Megan's win this week mm-hmm. Um. Megan uh, posted in the group, she had a low back flare up yesterday, just like we were talking about. It's almost like, Tom, you plan these (laughs) wins to link to what we're talking about. I do. I feel like I've been stitched up. (laughs) Uh, I felt suitably sorry for myself long enough to do some online shopping, then loaded up Tom's flare up video. That's the one on YouTube. It's the exact stuff I used to do in like my worst flare ups. I actually would go through those movements to ease the pain, Mm. um, which would then get me to doing the likes of SMM doing the harder things. Also, um, it's sort of a good side note here. Actually, if you do, if say you do have extreme back pain, tangent camera. If you do tangent camera, <laughs> if you do um, go straight to hard stretches straight away, you'll mm. flare it up so much that you, you just can't tolerate it. Whereas if you do the things that you can kind of do that are bearable, mm. that you know it's still uncomfortable, but you can get through them. If you get that wee bit of movement going first, then you could go into uh, stretches yeah, after. Yeah. So it's almost like again, just bring it back to oh. start with rotating the joint before you actually yes. strengthen or stretch things further. Like if you try, if you try, <laughs> if you try and um, stretch something straight away, you'll it's probably, like band. 
Yeah, yeah. If you do an elastic band, it'll snap. If yeah. you warm it up and yeah. then pull, it'll be better. Exactly. And that's what the, the pain signals that you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> it's just instinctive. Uh, so back to Megan. Megan's problem is in doing toe touches and deadlifts, her back wants to seize at a certain point. So uh, I'm focusing on belly breathing, sexy cat, the only cat I'm interested in being, if we're being honest, and trying to bring gentle movements to the area as best I can while being mindful. And that, I love, I love that, being mindful. So often people are like, can I do this if I have X? Oh, try it and be mindful. Like draw awareness to your body. Um, shut up, JP. Move slowly, move slowly. <laughs> I'm mostly posting here because my reaction to a flare up was, along with the self pity, a dollop of shaming and rec- recrimination. Wow, what a word. As if the flare up was punishment for my sins. That's tough. But then I thought about this group and how so many of you would probably encourage me to cut myself some slack. Healing isn't linear and it's progress, not perfection. I used to have that in the inside of one of my jumpers. Mm-hmm. Um, after all, we can't hate ourselves into better life. Oh, I love that. That's a good, that's mm-hmm. a good line. Um, I think finding this grip is worth the price of admission, which is free. Uh, <laughs> I love all your progress posts and good vibes. Your stories are helping me win the mind game, which is the slipperiest game. Anyway, thanks for being wonderful. That is class. Mm-hmm. Good job, Megan. Well done. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah you can't you can't begrudge your body like it's it's trying to do its best it's trying to protect you it's, it's you've got to go it can. yeah it's like you know it hasn't killed you yet yeah. um you've you've <laughs> got to work on it in that way that you know you're like you okay buddy you know this is yeah, yeah. safe you know you've got to encourage it um in yeah. those times and and again figure out what you've missed because it's it's pains basically saying i need something mm. you got to find that something yeah. um so it's such an important it's, thing it's your body's language it's like Feeling and sensation is the only way your body can communicate with your brain. But we don't speak that yet in most cases. So you're trying to learn like, oh, it sent me a pain. What type of pain is that? Is that a hot pain, a cold pain, sharp pain, stabby pain? Is it a hesitation? Is it actually a pain or am I anticipating pain? Exactly. Which makes me create the pain. (laughs) Ah, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's always your own fault. (laughs) Yeah, it's just learning to like be mindful as as she talks about there. Mm -hmm. Um, Awesome. Yeah, that's sweet. Love that. What's episode three? I don't know. I don't have episode three. Oh, we notes. do, Tom. We do. Oh, we do. What is a fridge brick? What is, is a fridge brick? Your oh, favorite line. It's going to be a fun one. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So awesome. uh, thanks for listening. Uh, see you next time. Bye.